Welcome everyone to session three. This is the Seesaw Tech Integrationist Success Series. Thank you so much for spending time with us. I'm Angela. I taught kindergarten for 15 years and I lead the community team at Seesaw. And I really wanna support all the work that you are doing as you support teachers in your buildings. You can find me on Twitter. I love to connect and chat. And if you're joining us for the first time in this series, what I would just encourage you to do is, is keep coming. But we really cover a variety of topics, focus on practical ideas and resources, and of course, connecting you with a community of colleagues that are kind of in the same boat as you are. We do this every, the second Wednesday of each month. So if you're just seeing this for the first time, register and join us again or pass it along to a colleague um, if you found it beneficial as well. And you can get a certificate for joining this session. I am going to share a six character code during the session to get a recording, uh, or not a recording, a certificate uh, after you view this recording if you are watching it on YouTube or via a follow-up email. So those of you live, as a reminder, you don't need to do anything. You're gonna be all set with that information coming at you in an email. I'm so excited for today's topic, PD ideas for when you're short on time and budget. Now this topic really was um, inspired by our community. I had surveyed lots of integrationists and said, what do you wanna talk about? And this is something that came up several different times. So I've actually reached out and we have three amazing guests with us today. We have Adam, Michael, and Andy, and they're really going to run through some ideas that they implement and try in their own schools. So we're going to talk about experts down the hall, short PD sessions, offering choice in choice and format, a, empowering students to lead, and meeting teachers where they are. So Without further ado, welcome Adam and Michael. Really honored to have you here today sharing your experience and expertise. So let's just jump in. Tell us a little bit more about you guys. Thank you and uh, thanks for having us on. Uh, my name is Michael Medvinsky. I am an instructional technology integrationist um, at University Liggett School and also the Dean of Pedagogy and Innovation. So I have um, the uh, honor of working with all uh, teachers and learners pre-K-12 in our building. Uh, and I'm Adam Hellebuck. I'm Mike's sidekick. Uh, <laughs> uh, I teach uh, upper school history primarily, but also serve as the Dean of Curriculum and Assessment. Uh, and so Mike and I work really closely together as program deans uh, across all grade levels to integrate professional development and, and learning opportunities at University Lincoln School yep. in Gross Point. Yay, we are so excited. So make sure you uh, give Adam and Michael a follow. They'd love to connect on Twitter, of course, as well. Um, let's just get started with your, your first idea here. So for us, uh, many of the teachers here um, have uh, things that they are experts in or are developing and really excited to share. So sometimes the best PD is from the teacher down the hall. And we mm -hmm. want to make sure that all of our teachers here feel valued and visible and sharing what they're doing in their classroom is just part of their day-to-day -day happenings. And so we have teachers here that are Seesaw ambassadors. We have um, department chairs who uh, you know, lead their department in thinking and learning around a certain content area. Um, we have cultures of thinking uh, in each division and developing that um, daily five cafe strategies in our lower school and thinking about how we can implement that uh, in, in, with, our, with our new readers um our our tech and our makers um also like to share mm -hmm. the things that they're uh developing in their classrooms and you know thinking about beyond the technology side of things just helping develop a community of teachers who may you know go down the hall to uh get a print and find a friend in the hallway mm -hmm. and then stop and talk about an idea develop something create a connection and a partnership right. um, and learn something from their friend just in the hallway that sparks some excitement. They go back to the classroom, they try it and they, they have a relationship. Right, and really talking about, you know, not a lot of time or a lot of budget. Um, a lot of these conversations started uh, by taking maybe two or three minutes in a faculty meeting and just saying, hey, I wanna, I wanna give a shout out to so-and-so 
uh, for their work on Seesaw and bringing this in. And it just starts to pique uh, colleagues' interests so that way they can have those, those conversations in the hall um, and really start to uh, develop their, their professional learning networks, but in person. Uh, and something that, that we enjoy talking about is bigger conceptual ideas. Um, thinking about the ways in which we use different questioning strategies. That's not a division specific idea. You can uh, think about asking probing and clarifying questions in a pre-K classroom, also in a fifth grade classroom, also in a ninth grade classroom, also in a senior's classroom, and thinking about how we can uh, continue that kind of um, professional discourse around all teachers, um, mm -hmm. just starting with the faculty meeting and then ending up in a hallway conversation or during lunch or any time that you know they have to, to to grow ideas yeah and especially with those big ideas starting with the big ideas means then we can say oh you know with that big idea have you tried seesaw have you tried other kinds of of technology tools have you tried um other kind of of ways of incorporating that into your class and it, may, it makes for much more robust uh conversations and implementation really in the classroom yep well, and I love that you started with this one, actually, because I think sometimes, you know, if there's the mindset that we have to have someone from the outside come in or we have to send teachers away to X, Y and Z to really reap the benefit of, you know, innovating or trying something new. And I love that you're calling out. There are so many teachers just among, you know, among your staff that really have a lot to offer. So I love that. Like, I love that you're starting with that one. Me too. And none of us feel like we're experts in any area right but yeah. what we do what we do find is that we are thought provokers and if we have a conversation nobody has the answer we may have the answer we may offer a resource but nobody feels like they're the expert so we feel like we're all growing together yeah. which really creates a community of um of sharing and learning and growing together yeah everyone is welcome to contribute and everyone is kind of expected to contribute too yeah, yeah. um which takes us to uh some some professional learning we do have um, scheduled. And so something that we started a couple of years ago and really thinking about doing more of this year is short PD snacks where um, it's just a half an hour of time after school. I know we're, you know, we're talking about when, when you're short on time, but if you can carve out a little bit of time together, then you have some time to talk about specific things. And so we have these PD snacks, like yesterday we ran um, a, a seesaw afternoon where we talked about the, the new updates and we talked about the um, Chrome extension and got teachers excited about it and how to use it. It was a playground time. It was a time for us to grow ideas around a certain thing. Um, we have uh, a community building um, around Halloween where all the, the lower school teachers um, make their Halloween costumes. And we may learn to use something like a Glowforge laser cutter or a silhouette vinyl cutter or something like that. But we're all sitting around um, having fun and learning a new skill. Uh, we've made, um, we were uh, cat in the hat and thing numbers one through 23 one year. We made our own t-shirts. Uh, we were Scrabble pieces the other year and we cut the stencils and painted our own uh, you know, pieces of wood right. to be Scrabble pieces. So there's so many opportunities for us to gather around one single idea, short enough where people can say, oh, yeah. I can I can do a half an hour. Mm -hmm. um, and then yeah. it grows exactly. from there. And really- I love that too. After a full day of, of teaching, right? It's like, I can squeeze in a half hour. Let's, let's do it. Let's play and get energized. I love that idea. And really being conscious of that, that making it a half an hour. So teachers know it's not, well, it says a half an hour, but it's really 45 minutes or an hour. Uh, really right. sticking to that time has has made for really uh, thoughtful uh, and efficient conversations in that time. Snacks always help too. Yeah, definitely. Um, in addition to kind of the the snacks, uh, as it were, the snack PD, uh, we also have some year long cohorts that we run for volunteer uh, groups of teachers, and these are also kind of short individual sessions, but they they go over a theme throughout the year. Uh, so, for example, um, we hold a curriculum committee that's a volunteer group. Uh, that really looks at, uh, you know, uh, pedagogical and, and curricular ideas um, surrounding a mentor text. And so a lot of our groups, uh, for not a lot of money, um, we've been able to find, you know, either a mentor text like a book or an article uh, to really focus our conversation on a topic. So, for example, uh, for last year's curriculum committee, we chose uh, Understanding by Design uh, by Wiggins and McTighe and uh, really uh, went through that text throughout the semester uh, and and we're able to build a unit of curriculum together 
um, and have really robust conversations around that text. Uh, again, it was all internal PD. We didn't have outside experts other than, you know, the authors of the book, which were, uh, you know, it was fundamental and a foundational, awesome experience, uh, but really going from that end. Uh, another year-long theme and has been for the last couple of years is creating cultures of thinking. Uh, we've been fortunate to have Ron Richhart uh, visit Liggett um, for the past three years, uh, but we have lately, uh, this year began by talking about um, expectations for and of learners and thinking about what are those cognitive expectations we have in our own classrooms. So everybody brings their own experiences in and we talk about it within the group. So again, there's no somebody, uh, th there's nobody we bring in from the outside, but we do uh, talk about certain uh, concepts and how we can better, uh, better serve our learning community. In the lower school, we've been talking about documentation um, of learning where um, some teachers uh, have been kind of snapping uh, pictures in Seesaw and sending it home. Today we read this book and today we, uh, you know, um, annotated this poem um, and thinking about how we can uh, develop that into documentation for learning, where learners are using Seesaw to go back and reflect upon um, their uh, previous posts. He, I used to think and now I think my thinking has changed because, and I think that the multi page. Uh, addition to that is really going to be a catalyst for going back to other uh, to previous posts, adding another page to mm -hmm. it and 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 reflecting on our own thinking. So it's been really great. Um, homework and grading. Uh, it's been a, a couple of year conversation. We still have some uh, some thinking to do around that, uh, but we have uh, thought about hacking homework by uh, by a friend star uh, and read that a bit. And we're looking for a mentor text for diversity, equity, inclusion. So if anybody has any yes, suggestions please, for a mentor share. text, uh, please reach out on, on Twitter uh, and let us know something you've had success with. Mm -hmm. Love and it. Really, can, I ask uh, one, can I ask one clar clarifying question? Because I love this idea. And when, when are teachers selecting the topic that they, they're most interested in? Or are you kind of selecting and they're, they're, they're all joining in the same conversation? Oh, we offer multiple of these year-long cohorts throughout the year. And so teachers can self-select into really anything they would like to do. Um, they can also offer suggestions for these year-long cohorts and, and uh, we can get a critical mass around that, we'll do it. Um, we also run ed camps throughout the year and, and the topics that seem to surface regularly at the ed camp uh, tend to become our year-long cohort topics. Love that. Thank you for letting me know about that. And monthly emails, tell us a little bit about this. So we have uh, thought about how we can best curate some of the um, blog posts we read and some of the Twitter chats we do and our followers and the, and the resources we gather from them. And so Adam and I have been um, thinking about how we can send out a once a month targeted learner engagement, authentic assessments, tech tips, um, anything around that, but curate uh, a specific link to share, curate a specific uh, follower that you know has has been uh, really uh, vocal about a certain concept. Um, we really enjoy sharing Edutopia, Mind Shift, mm -hmm. Cult of Pedagogy, um, Teach Thought, uh, the hashtags on Twitter like uh, Ed Chat, Seesaw Chat, Learner Engagement, all those that um, that we uh, curate ourselves but to really just send something very focused and specific to uh, to our teachers. Yeah, it can be really overwhelming at times to get, you know, if you if you belong to ASCD Smart Brief or any of these other kind of uh, email services, they're great resources. Uh, but, you know, on the teaching day, it can they can often fall through the, tr the cracks. And so our goal is to really focus everyone's attention on maybe one or two or three uh, links in that email that that staff can really go to and, and focus on and work with um, and hopefully collaborate with others on. Love that idea. Um, we're just getting started. There's so much to talk about. I feel like we could just stop right now and just continue the conversation. Um, so thank you, Adam and Michael. But we have Andy Leiser also here with us who has some great ideas on the topic. And before Andy starts to talk, I'm just going to shout out the first three digits of the code you'll need if you're watching this recording to get the certificate. Those digits are 438. And with that, Andy, take it away. Hey everyone, it is always a pleasure to hop in with Seesaw and share what we're up to here in Hastings, Minnesota. Uh, my name is Andy Leiser. I am the Elementary Integration Specialist here in Hastings. I'm a Seesaw Ambassador, Apple Distinguished Educator, but most importantly, I'm a dad and a husband. 
I have been in education for a little while. I taught 10 years in the East Bay, the Bay Area, California. So shout out to Benicia Unified over there. And this is my sixth school year as um, Hastings sole tech integrationist. And I work with three elementary schools, there's about, I don't know, 1400 students, 100 plus staff. So I never seemed to be in the right place at the right time. So I had to get creative on how do we meet all of the uh, different needs that we have. We are a shared iPad classroom. We do have PC computer labs and Chromebook carts. So we've got the whole gamut of devices. Uh, coffee's my fuel of choice. Um, and actually I learned an awful lot about properly roasting coffee from uh, Blue Bottle Coffee, which is out of San Francisco, uh, in their online um, on-demand videos and tutorials, which I thought was pretty awesome. Um, you're gonna notice I'm attempting to use the new creative tools in Seesaw for my slides today. I hope that that, that goes off well, um, because I believe really strongly in using the same tools our learners are using whenever and wherever possible. Um, so helps me think differently and find creative ways to showcase what we're doing here. Um, so here's some of the stuff that we've been trying out in Hastings for the past few years. Um, some have been awesome, some we're still learning and growing with. So with that said, no budget. All of this was just sort of organically free. Uh, let's get into it. So um, in 2015, we established our, our iKids program, so our student tech team, informed kids with incredible device solutions. Uh, this was an idea that came back from one of our conferences here in the winter in Minneapolis. And a first grade teacher came back and said, why don't we do this? And I was like, all right, let's give it a go. So uh, we started this pilot program uh, one year and fourth graders were selected by their teachers who met sort of some qualities that we doc talked about. And we met uh, once or twice a week during the recess portion of their lunch. Now, I'm not one to take recess away from children ever. So we made sure that the students agreed to the commitment that they wanted to be there and that we had the parent permission. It was all good. So I took time in the 15 minutes I had them to train them on any number of topics, uh, device troubleshooting, settings, app flows, really anything that kind of came up. And they would be our in classroom experts or they were a phone call away to come into a more primary grade. So these are fourth graders. So uh, as the, there's a program kind of has evolved over the years, now they're applying via Google form. Now I take third and fourth graders. Uh, we had 180 some applications last year. We're about to open that application up again this year. Um, and only 45 across the three schools are selected. So it is a, it is a life lesson in application reality. But um, what we have done has begun to expand beyond just sort of device maintenance and, and tutorials. We've moved into helping students and classrooms create content, create PSAs, to create their own videos. And we're modeling that with a, a weekly video newscast that these this crew sort of spearheads. Um, you know, we keep all our devices in top form. We still do all of the things that we used to do, testing out new apps together and resources. We're committed to what we call our motto of assist and inform, where we, yes, come up with some solutions, but we also give you explanations on why. And this is all very student driven. Um, a few years ago, we began using Seesaw to connect the iKids at all three schools. It was fun to have them like hop in and see their friends like from T-ball and, and uh, gymnastics and everything. Oh, I, mean, I know that person. Um, and they would post questions to one another and help each other out remotely. It was actually pretty slick, so. Um, That's awesome. I feel like is, we could do a whole topic on this, Andy, but I know totally you have so much to share. Yeah, for sure. So one of the things that I started to do beyond what the, the iKids were doing was, you know, I was making all these videos and all of these tutorials and things, and I geared them toward the teachers in my district. But I felt like, you know, if this is helpful here, this is going to be helpful um, really anywhere. So I began really thinking about how I shared that, and thanks to that kind of blue bottle coffee experience from San Francisco, how how I learned kind of at my own pace and in a location that was most comfortable for me, I decided to take that model and kind of extrapolate that out here 
for our teachers to access and grow their own practice independently. Um, so for some certain more um, sensitive content specific to our district, I keep it in Google Drive and share it out that way. Um, and then for some of the stuff that I felt like, you know, more people would benefit from this. This isn't exclusive to us. I would try to put that out there onto YouTube uh, because I feel it's really important to openly share our resources, things that will help build competencies and, and benefit learning anywhere. I mean, if it helps kids, I want to make sure that we do that. So I've published hundreds of videos and there's followers from all over the place that benefit from what we're doing here. And then I explored Seesaw Blogs, which was awesome. And we continue to use Seesaw Blogs as a way to share our content within that same platform our students are using. So our teachers are modeling it, we're sharing tips, tricks, and highlight student work. This is where we host our Little Raider News, that weekly news show that we produce in clips uh, our iKids produce. And Seesaw is just a really great way to do that within the blog because we can share almost anything to our specific audience and beyond. So if you want to check it out, blog.seesaw.me slash Little Raider News. So this is brand spanking new. I've, I've only done this a handful of times. So this is definitely um, something I almost didn't include, um, but I like to model sort of the process. Um, and kind of like what Michael and Adam were saying about PD snacks, uh, my pop-up PDs are, pro are probably a little bit more like a, like a PD bite or like a, a fun size candy bar, um, which an in my family we call it. An appetizer. Yeah, maybe. it's an appetizer. Yeah. But some folks love this. Some really love to have their PD bland. But what I do is I just, I set up shop in a high traffic area, usually like in the main hallway right outside the office. And I pump some jams and I supply everything that's needed. And I just invite folks who are walking by to come try it out. It could be a student, it could be a parent, it could be a teacher, but I wanna get people in. And even I'll, I'll rope my daughter who's in there to kind of lead some things because our student experts are some of the most powerful voices we have. And, but most importantly, the idea is just to get in, have fun together. And we do, and then that sort of spreads and ideas sort of take root and I see them blossom in other places. So the idea of pop-up PD, um, just kind of getting in a, in a big front and center area and just being there with something to draw them in is, is pretty fun and powerful. So Angela said, hey, you should maybe, if we have some time, share this. I love this and I, I need to do it more. Uh, but I wanted to share Google Meet, if you're not aware of it, meet.google.com is awesome. It is a device agnostic video chat that allows you to screen share, to give demos, tutorials. I can connect through QuickTime my iPad so I can show that screen. It is a lifesaver because I can't be everywhere at once, but Google Meet sort of lets me in a way. So I share the link one time and I share my availability times. And I, when it's that time, I just let it run in the background. And when somebody joins, I get a little chime no matter where I am. And um, it's fabulous. They have the screen sharing abilities. And I just noticed, and I think I included down there, a really awesome accessibility feature on the fly live captioning, which is incredibly inclusive. And, and you should check it out because I'm going to. Um, but what I like about this is you establish sort of a digital place, your digital office hours, and folks can come to you if they need it. You can see them, talk to them, demo things. It's, it's pretty awesome. So I'd recommend you check that out. And I would be remiss if I did not mention the plethora of information that's in the Seesaw Help Center. Um, if I don't have an answer to someone in the moment, this is where I go uh, because I love like their step-by-step -step text guides, there's video tutorials and I don't have all the answers. So after like digging in and trying to find everybody else's questions, I began to say, you know, you should really check out the Seesaw Help Center and helping them sort of, you know, figure things out for themselves. And it's been really awesome. Um, so I encourage you to, if you're, you know, if you're using CISO and I'd like to think that you are, because you're here, um, share that. Hey, look, you know, you might find your answer in the CISO help pages and maybe suggest a keyword search. Um, instead of doing it for that way, we're empowering our staff, which then I hope they would in turn uh, pass on to their students modeling that process. 
Um, if that doesn't work, there's always help at seesaw.me, so you can email in, but I've heard that's a pretty busy place lately, so. Um, <laughs> you know, it's just back to school, Andy. Oh, no yeah. <laughs> so anyway, yeah. so, the yeah. Seesaw Health page is this total catch-all. Yeah, so the website is help.seesaw.me for our help center, of course, if you're not familiar with that yet. Um, and while you're thinking of your questions that you want to ask, uh, Adam, Michael, and Andy, I'm actually going to show you a few more things. Um, and here's, of course, how you can connect with Andy, and I'll, I'll be sharing um, as well um, on, our, on our kind of final resting page, the contact information for Adam and Michael as well. But a couple things I also just want to throw your way. Uh, these are new resources that we have created to support you in supporting teachers. So thinking about being short on time, we actually have Seesaw training stations uh, that we've created with the help of, you know, a couple amazing Seesaw uh, tech integrationists. Shout out to Joni and Heather who helped in this process. But these are ready made, ready to go. Each of these stations is about three to five minutes. So, you know, even if you've got a short time to meet with a teacher and you just want to play, this would be perfect for a pop up PD, even as um, Andy talked about. So, those resources are there for you as well as something uh, that we call Seesaw Snapshots. So these are really uh, quick ideas, Seesaw tips in printable form, hang them anywhere. Maybe they're in the workroom, lounge, or restroom. Um, and you can, of course, also send these electronically as well for uh, teachers to really help them um, with, with various uh, steps and in inspiration in Seesaw. So I just wanted to mention those as well if you missed out on us talking about those in our last session and of course you are here right now in a free webinar but we also of course have sessions for teachers so this is where we house all of those sessions that are updated each month so if you're thinking oh my gosh i can't possibly uh help all these teachers we are more than happy to support you in doing some of that work for you in these sessions and again hopefully creating um, inspiration and sparking creativity in your classrooms as well and even just pulling this session together, we I really reached out to our tech integrationist group on Facebook to get their ideas and generate their ideas as well. So for if you are not yet connected in that space, I highly encourage you to run there as well if you're looking to connect with more colleagues that are in a similar position that you are. So we are going to go into questions here live and I wanna just give the last three digits of the code. You'll You'll need to get the certificate if you're watching the recording those digits are two seven one 